Well, that was certainly an emotional video. I cried, I laughed, all in the space of two minutes. But <laughs> I can't believe we fitted everything that we just saw all into five and a half months. And I just wanted to um, share my congratulations to the DTS. And um, uh, we were in staff meeting this morning and it was all, oh, you're going to cry. I said, oh, I won't cry. And here we go. But, um I am just so proud of you all, so um, proud as we shared our highs, together we shared our lows, our laughter, our tears, our ups and our downs, but you ran the race well and I just want to say I believe in you all, I believe in the future that God has placed ahead of you, Um, you are all amazing individuals with amazing callings on your lives and I'm so grateful that you opened your hearts to one another, you opened your hearts and your lives to us, to Reef to Outback and as an Australian I want to say thank you for coming to this nation, thank you for pouring into the youth of this nation, thank you for giving up um, seven weeks and being selfless and going into outreach, thank you. Thank you. I believe in you all so much. And God has an amazing future for each and every one of you. And I'm so excited to hear 10 years down the track of of where you've gone and the things you've done. And to spend eternity with all of you. And uh, I'm so blessed to have had you share in, to be a part of sharing in your life for the past five and a half months. I might just have a verse that pretty much wraps it all up and it's out of uh, Hebrews 12 verse 1 through to uh, 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that is so, that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. God bless you all. I too just want to share briefly with the DTS. As we look at... um all those photos and videos and the journey that it's been, it's been absolutely phenomenal. And to have done it with each and every one of you has been a thrill and an honor. And I just want to say thank you for coming. It's been a, a season of new things for Reef to Outback. New schools, new focuses, new outreach locations. And you guys have been all a part of that. You guys have an inheritance in this ministry. You have an inheritance in this nation. You have an inheritance in your outreach locations. God has given you those places, and I pray that you would hold deep in your hearts that which God has done in you and that which God has given to you. Our reward is in eternity, and I know that eternity will have in its pages the things that you guys have done over these past five and a half months, the things that he has done in you and the things that he has done through you. And I'm so blessed to look out at you guys and see each and every one of your stories and each and every one of your guys' lives and knowing that this is just the beginning. So I agree with Shay in saying thank you for being here. Thank you for coming and thank you for what you will do with your lives. We talked about it yesterday, but it's time for you guys to go and to do great and wonderful things. And I guess to kind of go along with what Shay said in her verse in, in Hebrews of what Jesus did for us that he may be our strength Then in Ephesians 3, verses 16 and 17 through to 20, it says, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through the spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And in verse 20, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. 
To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. According to the power that is at work within you, may he receive the glory. As you guys go out from this place, may it not be you that is glorified, but Jesus and the work that he has done within you. Because it's for him and it's because of him that you guys have come and it's because of him that you guys go that he may receive the reward for his suffering. Each one of you is a phenomenal, phenomenal person. And God's going to do incredible things through you. You can do it. You can do it. You can do and will do great and mighty things for the glory of the Lord. We love you guys. We're so proud of you. We're so grateful that we get to do this. As staff, we're so grateful that you guys come and allow us to be a part of your lives. We don't take it for granted by any means, but we say thank you for letting us be a part of your lives. So as you guys go home, we say that you can do it. We believe in you. We're proud of you. Thank you. God bless. I want to invite um, Mark and Arlie and uh, Casey to come and share about the, what God's done in them in the IPHC. It's a phenomenal opportunity that they're here. It's a miracle that they're here with us for graduation. So we want to say thank you guys for uh, joining with us. So all three of you guys, if you want to come up and share what God has done. Hey, everybody. We're real glad to be here. It was a surprise two and a, three days ago. We were sitting in the living room. I was shaving a coconut in the backyard. And they said, okay, everybody come to the living room. We got flights, we got our visas. They give us our visas, we're going right now to pick them up. And it just all came together so swiftly. And wow, what a blessing. I wanna tell you guys a story about, uh, partly about something I learned. Um, I know God brought me to Australia. I didn't wanna leave home. I was really doing real well. And I know God brought me to change my heart because I was on a track towards medicine with the wrong heart. And I know that God brought me here, like a best friend wanting to show someone something beautiful. He, he said, you need to see this so that your heart changes. And now I think I have a totally different aspect of uh, what my life is going to be, my career as a doctor. And so <clears throat> Amanda and I were walking to this lady's house. Uh, her name is Cephalina. And it's part of our clinics is we do home visits for people that can't come to the clinic. Uh, we arrived and Cephalina was on the floor. Uh, and she kind of looked at us like, just pathetic. <laughs> and, uh, and so we sat down with her with our translator and uh, we started asking her questions. She didn't have any bowel movements for a week. She hadn't been eating, she, she couldn't eat. She, I mean, we just asked her every question with, there was no solution in sight. This lady was just, had everything wrong with her. And um, I turned to Amanda and I said, this lady's just not even sick, what's wrong here? So we, we talked to our translator and we said, you know, she's not sick. We gotta, we gotta figure out what, what is with this woman? And um, we started asking her more questions, more questions. We started going deep with her, finding out more about her life. And then all of a sudden she just, like she, something in her snapped and she just told us, she says, I just had a miscarriage a week ago. And so we said, oh. So Amanda scooted up close to her, put an arm around her. I told her a story about my sister had a miscarriage. Um, and the lady thought it was so abnormal. She thought she was the only one. And she hadn't moved from the floor for five days or something like that. And, and we just talked with her. And I told her the story about my sister. Amanda was comforting her. And, and, like, and then we prayed for her. And everything that was just, it's like she had weights, weights and weights of bricks. And it just went away. And she sat up and she started talking to us after we prayed. And she, and she started telling us about how she, she really wanted to go talk to the pastor, but she wouldn't. And I mean, she hadn't moved for like five days. She was such, in such depression, despair. And then after we left, we left. And so I, I assume she ate something. And she actually walked down to our clinic, like down the, the cow path, down the dirt road, all the way to our clinic. And she hadn't, uh, so it was just a 180 degree turn in this lady. And she went from not moving, just pathetic on a wood, dirty wood floor to walking down to our clinic. Uh, her husband gave us a bag of fruit. And um, like, it really showed me that medicine and healthcare is so much more than 
what it is, like the medicine and the bandages, it's that these people just need someone to listen to them, to tell them, we care about you. Jesus' love cares about you. You are valuable. And they don't ever hear this from anybody. And that's, that was our biggest job over the whole outreach, was just to tell people, Jesus loves you. Here, we love you too. So it really impacted my life. I know that stories, I have lots of stories like that. Everybody on our team does. And it's absolutely changed my heart. Um, I'm just going to share a story about one of the ladies that I met on home clinic. I was with Hannah and Stacy in Taja in the Highlands. And um, it was the second house that we had gone to. And it was really dark. All the windows were closed. Only the door was open. And we were walking by. She, was, she yelled out to us. Her name was Juratmi. And so we um, walked to the door. And she invited us in. And it was really dark. Um, and she was laying on a mattress in the middle of the floor. And she just sounded really sad. And so we walked over, sat down. And when we saw her, her stomach was like way out to here. And she had been to the doctor, and they said that it was an enlarged spleen, but it was obviously more than that, because that was way too big for just an enlarged spleen. So um, there was really nothing that we could do for her except for pray. So we asked her if we could pray for her, and um, she said, yeah. And she was um, Muslim. So after we prayed for her, um, Hannah started asking her some questions and like, have you know, have you heard about Jesus before? And she hadn't. And after she said that, something in my heart was just like, ah, um, it made me really sad. Um, and so um, Hannah continued to ask her some questions and eventually she led her to the Lord. And um, as we, we um, so we prayed for her again and um, it was just so encouraging to see, like, before we had come, she just looked so hopeless and full of despair. And after we had prayed for her, it was like a 180 turn. She was smiling. She just looked so full of joy. And it was so encouraging just to see that, um, you know, when she heard that God loved her, that she ha you could just see it from her face just emanating. And that was just so encouraging and a blessing to me. And so, like Mark, it was... Um, just knowing that healthcare is not the only way that we can help her, just telling her that Jesus loved her and there was more than that. And um, as we were leaving um, Taja, we heard from um, Bapa, the, the clinic, from his clinic. He said that she was out moving around and her stomach had actually shrunk a little and she was out throwing stones at cows. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> It, it was really good to hear that she was doing better and just an encouragement, so. Oh. I think I've concluded that uh, regardless of who, what, when, where, why, or how, um, we just really learned that we want to follow God, we want to love and trust God, and a couple of things, um, aims we had was to learn the true meaning of compassion, mercy, miracles. We wanted to know what um, God really feels about these things. And one of our key uh, scriptures was Isaiah 61. So I'm going to read that now from the RAV, the Revised Arley Version. <laughs> and this one goes out to my team. The Spirit soars sweetly like a dove, healing hearts with faith, hope, and love, anointing oils for the loyal. Love and life live in the Lord our Savior, graceful judgment the year of his favor. Today, trust and obey. Faithfully follow the straight, narrow way. Jesus, judge of nation, tribe, tongue, the wise and foolish, old and young. A message proclaimed to all who perceive truth and conceive to believe. Calm comfort in sorrow, bright hope for tomorrow. True peace you never need to rent, steal, or borrow. The enemy prowls like a thief and a lion, deceiving even the steadfast in Zion. Victory in what looks like defeat, cracked, broken vessels, whole and complete. The fighting faithful renamed, sincere and steady, even off duty, eager and ready, man-made mirrors of God's reflection, to the wandering, wandering without direction, lost longing for love and perfection. What's ruined, the, the righteous remnant will restore, like a trivial chore, bringing beauty out of gore, what is destructed to the core, redeemed, rebuilt, twice the quality of before. Cold is now hot, what is 
from what was not. Last is first, blessed instead of cursed. Slow now fast, every failed test passed. Strength, not shame, and a transformed name. Ho from hopeless and despair to blessing and fame. Mercy triumphs judgment, grace conquers sin. Running a race, led by Jesus, we win. Heavenly prizes for the faithful, devoted and grateful. The royal loyal found famous among the lost, aimless, nameless. nameless. Crowned friend of the king, salvation my clothes as a bride wears a ring. Vast love as the ocean, living life with determined devotion. As scorching sun leaves land dry and wings vital for birds to fly. A dawning na day no man will deny. God's infinite perfect praise will rise to the sky. At you, God bless you.
Thank you, guys. Um, wow, IPHC 07. Can I just say that 4 a.m. yesterday morning, we were sitting in the back of a pickup tr truck or ute uh, in the, somewhere on the border between Papua New Guinea and Indonesia, heading to an airport where we thought a plane was coming to get us, but we weren't 100 percent sure, hoping that there would be another plane after we possibly catch that plane to get back to Australia. So uh, that's just one story of many stories of our time and this whole school, which is kind of is so relevant because the word God gave for me at the very, very beginning of the school was the word explorers. And can I just say that these bunch of students are explorers, uh, incredible explorers. And not only did he give me that word, he gave me adventure, uh, which <laughs> we saw plenty of. And um, I'm really glad he gave me those words because those are two exciting words. And I'm up for a good time rather than a calm time, shall we say. So I'm really, really grateful that that was the words for our school. He also uh, very, very clearly gave us um, a lot of scripture. But the whole thing about speaking truth and speaking over people and speaking life and the power of words. And we just saw uh, that happen so many times on outreach and um, even on one another in class. Just being able to speak words of life over people who have never heard it for the first time. Who have never uh, been told that they are worth anything because uh, perhaps they're the minority of a people group. Or, uh, but for them to hear that they are valued. It's just a phenomenal, phenomenal opportunity to be able to do. And um, these guys are also a bunch of pioneers. This is the first school of IPHC, Introduction to Primary Healthcare for Reef to Outback. It was the first time we've been to Irian Jaya or West Papua as a ministry. It was the first time we went to places within Irian Jaya for the uh, youth with the mission base within Irian Jaya. So we pioneered new stuff there as well. So it was... I don't think we did nothing that hadn't been done before. It was all first, it was all new, and we all learned as we went. And it was brilliant. And um, each of these guys, can I just say that uh, they are... <coughs> sorry about that one. They are phenomenal. Like, um, it has been an honour to lead a bunch of leaders. I've told them all that before. And in turn, I would be willing to be led by any one of them. Uh, I trust them completely. I know they've always got my back. They have been there through thick and through thin, through circumstances I couldn't have even imagined uh, that we somehow managed to come across. They have been there for me. And uh, they all have incredible things in store for them. And I love it that not one of them is um, thinking about not pursuing what they've learned one way or another. And I'm really, really grateful for that. And I'm also so, so grateful that uh, you guys got it. You got it that healthcare is not about a Band-Aid. Healthcare is about uh, sharing the gospel. It's about praying for someone. It's about taking that opportunity to go deep. So as you've heard me say it like a million and one times, um, I will be continually praying for you that you will continue to go deep in every situation with anybody that you come across and continue to find out a way to reflect the character of God and the heart of Jesus to anybody that you meet because you're all so capable and um, just so stinking grateful <laughs> for all of you guys and would not have been able to do it without you guys. You're a, a great bunch of team. And the adventures we've been on, I don't think anybody else could have done as good as you've done. Like it's only been as fun as it has been because of you. And I just also want to take this opportunity to just say an incredible thanks to the base here at Reef to Outback. Uh, I don't think one time I felt alone. One time I felt like I was just plugging away at something by myself. I had the support of the leadership here, which was phenomenal. Our friends here, um, of even the DTS, everybody here was just so supportive, and we are grateful for you. So thank you so much. And I'm just, I'm just going to hand over to Joanne, our training coordinator. Wow. Well, I get the absolute privilege and pleasure today to thank some very special people um, who've done an incredible amount of work in the last five and a half months. And uh, they are our school leaders for the DTS and the IPHC. Because really, what you've ha ha experienced over this time could not have happened without these guys. Their love, their commitment, their tears, their passion. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it all. 
And I just really want to say from, from the bottom of my heart, I am so proud of our young leaders. I love Youth With A Mission and that we be believe in young leaders. And it's an incredible privilege to see all that these guys have done. Pioneered, they've, they've, they've fought the good fight, they've just hung in there and believed and believed and believed. And it is an incredible, incredible privilege to be able to work alongside these guys. And I just want to take a moment and say thank you to them. So I would really just like to invite Hannah, Justin and Shay, if you could come up and could we give these guys a round of applause for all that they've done. They're amazing. We love them. And just as a little token of our appreciation on behalf of Reef to Outback, we'd just like to give you a little something and thank you. Shay Shay? Love you, darling. Thank you. Oh, well, now comes the fun part. Thank you so much to you guys. You are amazing. And speaking of amazing, we have some amazing students to graduate right now as well. So this is, you've been waiting all morning for this. So I'm going to invite Hannah to come up and we're going to graduate the IPHC first of all. Okay, our first graduate from the introduction, to, the very first introduction to primary healthcare here at Reef to Outback is Amanda. Next is April. The incredible little dynamo, Ali. Our wonderful Korean friend, Benji. These guys have pretty much done three nations in about three days, so. Um, and Casey. Vern. Our doctor in training, Mark. Matt. And our last but by no means least, Stacy. Congratulations, IPHC, well done. I'm no, now going to invite our DTS leaders to come up and we'll graduate the Discipleship Training School for October 2007. All right, first DTS student is Adrian. And Alex. <laughs> Next up is Ali. Amy. Ange. 
any. <laughs> Brienne. Carissa. Carissa. Sorry. Sorry, Carissa. Carianna. Cheyenne. Cute hair. Uh, Corey. Danny. Darren. Donovan. <laughs> Elizabeth. Eric. Here you go. Okay, Mr. Kratz, come on down. Evan. <laughs> Gabe. Anna Nelson. <laughs> Hannah Price. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> Yanina <laughs> Jessica <laughs> Kathleen <laughs> Katie <laughs> Kiwi <laughs> Kyle Lisa. <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> Peter. Rebecca. <laughs> S 
Sam. And our final DTS graduate is Wendy. Can I ask all the DTS students and all the IPHC, could you just quickly come up the front because we want to just congratulate you and uh, can you all just come up and stand at the front and face everybody? And can we give them a round of applause, please? Yeah. We give you the graduates. Sam just got a good old of it. <laughs> well, this is it. This is the October quarter of 2007, our first ever IPHC, our first Jimmy DTS, and our first IDMS DTS. Congratulations, you guys. You did it. We're very proud of you. What we want to do is we want to have one last worship time together, just again recognizing who God is and glorifying Him. We started together with, with a bunch of worship. We want to end with some worship. So if we can just clear out the chairs and uh, invite the band to come up, we're just going to sing a few songs to the Lord and just really honor Him. So as we worship, let it not just be a time of singing songs, but let's, let's glorify the Lord.